When you first start getting into running, everything is going to suck. Every single time you go on a run, you're gonna wanna give up and die. You're gonna wonder why just doing a straight mile is so hard and why your pace is so slow and why everything hurts. But I promise you, stick with it for like a month and it will end up being one of the best things you have ever done for yourself. Hello, beautiful people on the internet. My name is Jaden and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post a lot of lifestyle content and a lot of self-development stuff. So. If either one of those sounds interesting to you, be sure to click the subscribe button down below and turn on those post notifications so that you never miss a video from me. So I have been running for about four-ish years now. I have had my ups and downs. I've had times where I've been super consistent and I've also had times where I've been super inconsistent. But lately I've been feeling like I'm figuring stuff out. In 2022, I actually ran a mile every day for 30 days straight. In 2023, I decided to ran randomly raw dog a marathon training plan that hypothetically had me running a marathon in 11 weeks. Got up to about 16 miles and then I hurt myself and quit. And today I am actually on basically day 50 of a running streak. Today is day 49, but it sounds a little bit better saying 50. And I am planning to go all the way to 100 days before I stop. Now I'm no expert on running and clearly I have made my fair share of mistakes. But throughout all of this trial and error, I have learned a lot. I just want to be another person who gives some tips on how to go about this hobby or sport, whatever you want to consider it. And I don't want it to sound like it's coming from anyone who is like this super crazy athlete or like an ultra runner or anything like that. Like I'm just a regular person. I just go on runs. I don't necessarily consider myself a runner. Also, I would recommend watching this video pretty much only if you're running in like the three to five mile range or less because once you start going past like five ten miles you're not a beginner anymore you honestly are well beyond my wisdom and yeah I I just believe you know more than me so feel free to click out this video you've earned it but if you do believe that you can benefit from this information or if you're in that lower mileage zone definitely continue watching so first we're gonna go into some of the things that would be good for you to purchase but I don't want to be that person who's like here's all the stuff that you have to buy to start. You can start with what you already have, I promise you. Or you can do very budget friendly things. So this is just kind of like a general guide of what you need, but how you can make it budget friendly. So the first thing is your clothes. Obviously you need to wear something when you go on a run, unless you live in like a nudist colony. But honestly, there are a lot of people who make this like super complex. I have not bought any running clothes like ever. I actually haven't bought like any new workout clothes since I've started running and I didn't really have that much. Those fancy workout sets are definitely a want, not a need. When I go on my run, honestly, I could just wear something like this. I put on essentially any top. It doesn't matter if it's cropped. It doesn't matter if it's ribbed, if it's form fitting, literally whatever. The only thing in my opinion that really makes a difference is if it's tight, like up here, like if you feel like you can't breathe when you're wearing it, then that's not a good sign. And also if it is hot where you live or if maybe you just sweat more than the average person or I mean, you're just sweating because you're running. Like if sweat is not your thing, then you definitely want spaghetti straps and that's about all that I really care about. If I know that my run is gonna be like a mile or more or if it's just hot outside, I'm always gonna wear like an undershirt or a tank top. Again, doesn't matter if it's literally like a tube top with spaghetti straps, that's plenty good enough. Just cause those sweat stains can almost just like get annoying. It's not really that it holds you back or anything unless it bothers you to that extent and like you're thinking about the whole run then maybe that will hold you back but yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with sweating. It's just something that I definitely have in mind because I don't like sweating that much. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't really have any like real bras. I also don't own any sports bras. You can kind of get an idea of the bras I wear from this. They're literally just bralettes. So just cotton, basically like small shirts. They don't necessarily offer like a shit ton of support. And yes, I do have boobs, but the amount of volume I have going on, I feel like I can get away with just wearing something like this. I can't speak on anyone who has a bigger chest. I'm sure if you go bigger, you need more sport. Sports bras are definitely like a good idea. But again, I just want to be here to tell you that you don't have to wear a sports bra if you're on the smaller side for sure. But of course, that's up to your discretion. If they are bouncing a lot, 
you might get back problems you might get like rib problems it's hard to explain where this is but it's like kind of like a pain in your side I do get that sometimes but it's not worth me buying a sports bra because it only happens when I go on longer runs and I'm not really doing longer runs a lot but it's up to your own discretion you really just need to like do like one run see if it bothers you if it does get a sports bra get one and then just rewear it all the time if that's what you need to do as for bottoms the thing that you really need to look out for for bottoms is clothes that are gonna make you chafe chafing is my least favorite feeling it's probably the thing that bothers me the most and it's the thing that I'm most conscientious of when I am running if you're wearing any kind of shorts that basically allow your thighs to rub together in any way it's going to hurt no matter if you just run for five minutes or if you run for an hour it's gonna hurt so I would recommend leggings even in the heat leggings really aren't that bad at all but there's also like those biker shorts that go a little bit longer and also as I said these are all just like suggestions but you can get away with shorts if it's not too hot and if you're not running like super long distances. But when you're first starting out, you really wanna eliminate those things that are gonna like bother you and give you all this resistance to running, make you feel like, oh, it's too complicated or it's too painful, whatever. Like you wanna eliminate that as much as possible. So honestly, I would just recommend going straight with leggings. Don't even think about the shorts. The other thing is socks. You just wanna make sure your socks are long enough so that you don't get blisters on your feet. Like if the back part like the heel part of your shoe rubs against your ankle that is going to hurt just make sure you have kind of thick socks also so that you're nice and snug in there that's what I like to do at least okay so now shoes everyone who is a runner is gonna tell you that your shoes are your most important part and they're right yes your shoes are the most important part and that is probably the place you will want to splurge first however I just want to like take a moment real quick and let's think about if this is gonna be a commitment because running shoes are expensive Expensive. I would encourage you guys to honestly just use a regular pair of sneakers just for like a few days And if they really really bother you then yeah, maybe you can get a pair of running shoes But don't get the running shoes right away because you might not be committing to this your regular tennis shoes might be fine for a while You never know just like give yourself a chance with normal shoes before you start going crazy My shoes are the Brooks adrenaline GTS 23 these shoes are my babies. I love them so much. I hope I can continuously get that same pair after I have to retire the ones that I already have. I got that pair because my original pair were the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 21 and I love those so much as well and when I had to retire those I went with the Brooks Levitate 2 and those sucked. Those were terrible. So that was when I went back to the same model or whatever that I had before and the ones I have now were about $140. I know not everyone wants to spend that much on a pair of shoes which is why I said go with your normal sneakers until you feel comfortable spending that kind of money or until you feel committed to the process or yes technically until you feel both of those things and then you should do your own research on shoes I don't know enough about shoes and also the thing is even if you think you find the dream shoe you might wear it on a few runs and decide like no this actually isn't for me so there is a bit of trial and error that comes with it and everyone's preference is a little bit different but next we're gonna move on to tracking methods this is definitely a luxury in my opinion you want to have some kind of method to track your run you don't have to but it is something that I think most people really like to do you can go out you could buy a smart ring you could buy a watch specifically running watches like Garmin's or you could just use the good old Apple watch but I'm also here to tell you you can use your phone if you don't have a watch if you don't have a ring your phone is perfectly fine even if you don't have a phone treadmills will track your progress for you and since I'm talking about tracking methods let's go into all the apps and some products that are good for tracking your runs. So I've tried tracking through a few different apps before, but I have always had my Apple Watch in terms of what like physical object I'm using to track, but I've also used my phone as well. I've never had any kind of smart ring or a Garmin, even though I really want a Garmin. This is the only watch that I've ever had or have ever used for running. I do like it, it does come in handy, but I'm not really sure I recommend it because it does have its flaws. When it comes to pros, the Apple Watch does have its own fitness tracker that does merge with your phone into the help app and of course the fitness app you're gonna have your workout time your distance your pace your splits 
months and your average heart rate. So with that being said, yes, the Apple Watch works fine. It does everything that it needs to do. You're also able to track both outdoor workouts and indoor workouts. But the biggest con for me, I would say, is the battery life. Apple Watches really don't last that long. They have to be charged quite often. And a lot of people have complained that the tracking is not super accurate, especially in comparison to something like a Garmin. But aside from the Apple Watch, like I said, the phone is always a viable option. And if you want to do just treadmill runs, you can actually manually add your treadmill runs into your iPhone. And then outside of our basic Apple products, there are apps that you can get on your phone that do connect to Apple Watch and do track all of your runs. First one, and honestly my personal favorite, is Runa. Runa gives you an entire training plan based on the goals that you have. And what I really like about this is you can actually add other workouts like strength training and mobility training and Pilates all into that training plan as well alongside your runs that you're already doing. Runa also allows for indoor and outdoor workouts, so that's always a plus. Nike Run Club is also an app that I used when I first started running. I wouldn't say there's anything necessarily special about this app. It's just another option if you want to look at all the options and it shows all the same metrics and you're also able to do outdoor and indoor runs as well. And lastly, we have Strava. Strava is probably the most well-known running app of all of them. It's basically just a social media account for runners. So if you do have a lot of runner friends, you can kind of like compare your runs and look at what everyone did that day or that week or that month, whatever. It is super cute and I feel like, I don't know, it really connects people if they are all running together. The only con is that you cannot track runs on a treadmill. As I said before, pick any tracking method that you want. I would just recommend that you pick something that you want to stick with and don't try to track your runs in like 200 different places because that's just going to get confusing and overwhelming. It's really nice to have all your run data in one spot where you can compare maybe what you did right on a good run and what you did bad on a bad run, which days you did your best, which days you did your worst, all of that. So now you're actually ready to run. But how do you start? Where should you run? When should you run? What's your schedule? How do you stay disciplined? All of that jazz. The honest answer is that everyone is going to be drastically different. And the only way that you can find out what's going to work specifically for you is through a trial and error. As for a schedule, just focus on doing something that is maintainable. I know it sounds a little bit dumb coming from someone who is running every single day, but I mean, that's not something I would necessarily recommend. <laughs> it's just something I'm doing right now. My general recommendation for how often you should be running is like two to four times a week with three being like that sweet spot. Because if you do three days, you have one long run day, one pace run day, and one maintenance day. On your long run, you just want to go as long as possible. On your pace run, you just want to go as fast as possible. And on your maintenance run, you want to try to focus on improving your cardio fitness in general and keeping your form good. If you keep your same schedule every single week, using the same days every week, you're going to make progress. And for determining your lengths and your pace and all of that, honestly, don't worry about pace. Your pace will improve naturally. Literally, you don't need to look at it for quite a while. For distance, I would recommend just trying to run a mile. Take it as slow as physically possible. Literally ignore your pace and just go super slow. Just try to get through the entire mile. If you ever feel like you need to stop, just slow down. Even if your pace is 15 minutes to run a mile, that's still running a mile. And if you can manage to do that entire mile, that's your long run. And you can just take a certain percentage of that long run to do your pace run. Maybe a quarter mile, maybe a half mile. There is no magic formula for how to determine this, but if you do want a specific training plan, you can use Rena because it does give you that whole plan as I did say, or you can just Google running training plan online and they'll tell you what to do. And if you don't want a training plan, you can honestly just go off vibes. It works just as well. When you are prioritizing a run for one reason, ignore all the other reasons. If you're going on a long run, don't look at the pace at all. Just try to get as far as you physically can going as slow as you physically can. For a pace run, do the opposite. Try and go super fast. Don't worry about how long you went. When you're doing your maintenance runs, literally just focus on your heart rate and don't worry about your pace. Don't worry about your distance. When trying to work on your cardio fitness, you want to try to keep your heart rate in zone two. There are different exercises that you can work on for this. One of the ones that I just heard about was sprinting for four minutes and then resting for four minutes and repeating that over and over again until you don't want to do it anymore. It is really hard, honestly, to stay disciplined at first, but just keep it in your mind that after a while, it will get better. And what you really want to do for yourself is limit the friction. Most of the time, the hardest part is getting out the door. So get your outfit ready tonight before, fold it all up 
and put it right in front of the door. Get your shoes out, get your headphones out, get everything out and get it ready for you to put on immediately when you're about to go for the run and then just walk out the door and start. Don't walk around, think about if you're gonna do it or not. Literally start running the second you walk out your door. Eventually it will come naturally. I know there's also a lot of people who have trouble deciding if they're gonna run outside or if they're gonna run on a treadmill or if they're gonna run on a trail or on concrete or if they're gonna run in the morning or on the evening and when are they gonna wash their hair and all of this. Personally, I run in the afternoons, but that's mostly just because that's the only thing I can do at this point. I don't think I would ever really be a morning run person, but I've never really had the chance to. But this works well for me because I wash my hair at night anyways. So I run and then I shower. So like, I think honestly the best time to run is when you're gonna shower. Cause if you run in the morning, but you're an evening shower person, that's not really gonna work. But the alternative also isn't too great. Running on dirt is better for your knees, but also I just like concrete because I feel like I twist my ankle in the dirt a lot because it's just unstable surface. So it depends on if you want a stable surface or if you want something softer in pack. But once again, this kind of stuff is stuff that will come naturally and you shouldn't worry about it too much before you start. You should start and you will notice what you like and don't like it will come to you now let's talk about your nutrition this to me is the most serious thing and the only thing that I really want to emphasize for everyone a lot of other things are kind of like do what you want but this one it's like no you need to care about this so the most important thing about your nutrition is your electrolytes you're gonna be sweating a lot when you run and you're gonna be losing a lot of water and you need electrolytes just as much as you need water so I would recommend Gatorade or liquid IV either every day you run or almost every day and honestly have some anyways, regardless of if you're running because it's good for you. For food, honestly, you could do almost whatever you want. I was like really struggling for a while because I could never find like guides on how to prepare for a run in the evening. Nothing you eat really matters too, too much as long as you're not eating within like two hours of running. If you are eating within two hours of running, you want something lighter because you don't want all of that bouncing around your stomach while you're running. And you just want to go generally healthy. You don't want to eat like fast food. You just have a bunch of junk because that's gonna make you feel just bad but there's no like specification for how you have to eat when you're first starting out as you start going into like marathon training you have to get a little more strict but it's still not a science you're still gonna figure out what you like my recommendations are definitely things like granola bars protein bars bananas or honestly any fruit eggs anything like that that you can snack on especially if you do find yourself maybe getting headaches or maybe feeling lightheaded when you are going on these runs you're usually missing some form of nutrition or hydration once you figure that part out you've won your biggest battle and lastly recovery is also one of the most important parts Having the discipline to push through a hard run is always good, but setting yourself up so that it's not as hard of a run is even better. First off, don't go completely sedentary outside of your runs. I know it feels like you've done so much when you are going on your run that you just kind of want to lay around after, but getting in those steps, making sure you're still standing and walking and stretching pre and post run are really important. You just want to make sure you're moving your body. You always want to make sure you're stretching pre and post run. I am a victim of never doing that but it is important and it's good for you it makes your runs feel so much better when you do do it and definitely my most important tip is get a foam roller and or a massage gun and I want you to use those every night after you run or every morning right after you run that's just gonna break up the lactic acid in your legs and prevent that soreness from getting worse and worse and worse if there's any purchase I would really recommend it's literally those two you just want to roll out literally everything on your entire leg and your butt and your hips pretty much everything from your waist down and honestly even your back hurts sometimes even your arms hurt sometimes just because you are engaging those muscles so wherever you are sore make sure you're massaging them and then some other things that not a lot of people really bring up but things that make a difference for me are heating pads ice packs compression socks I don't see anyone ever talking about compression socks but I love them and also weighted blankets I don't know why but having a weighted blanket on your legs feels so good when you're sore and for me it just it really helps so anyways that's all the tips that I have for beginners nothing too crazy honestly that's how it is when you first start like don't take it too seriously because it's not also sorry for the dramatic lighting changes the Sun goes down so quickly now I do hope you guys enjoy this video and if you learned something be sure to tell me about it also if you have any other tips that I haven't really brought up definitely leave them in the comments below too but if you did enjoy this video be sure to leave a like and a comment and if you're feeling generous you can even subscribe. I do hope to see you guys all in the next one. But if not, bye bye.